What's going on guys? Coach Madden, you go pro baseball. I am here with Coach Cal. We're in Brooklyn, ground up baseball. If you're in the area, come check them out. Really cool place. We're gonna talk about, in this video, the best infield drills that you have. But before we get into it, I want you guys to go check out Coach Cal on YouTube. He's got some really great baseball videos. The information he's putting out is awesome. And the way he cuts it up, chops the video, is gonna keep your attention. You'll love it. Just go check it out right now. I'm gonna leave the link down below. Make sure you subscribe. Coach Cal, what's up? Give me your best infield drills. What do you got? Let's go. Hey, you need hands, period. If you're by yourself, here's what you can do. Right here, just get down, drop, pick. Very simple drill that's gonna allow you to really time up and kill that bounce. I think that's super important. Uh, once you're done with that, you can use your valley. We can do our, our picks, but if we have a partner, we can do the same thing from our knees and from our hands. I know you've seen that a million times, so I won't bore you, bore you to death. But we're gonna do something a little different though. This one's gonna be more like a drop step. We get a lot of backlash on that. You know, get in front of the ball, but to be honest, we're in front of this ball. We're just at an angle and we can allow space uh, to use our hands. So I'm gonna have my partner flip the ball to me. I'm gonna make sure I'm in like a 45 degree angle. So if I'm here, I'm just gonna drop back and have a low, very low center of gravity. Butts down, gloves down, and I'm gonna get one, one bounces. And I'm just gonna work my hands and try to kill this bounce. And once I'm done, he can mix in some almost like ground up flips where it's like an in-between bounce. So if you can start the ball on the ground and then just flip it right up to my chest. Flip it up. Yep, um, right there. If you can get a little deeper, boom. All we're gonna do is try to lean back and get a little more deeper, deeper, boom. And this is gonna allow you to make sure that you are down and seeing that ball. Cause those low ones, those skippers, those are tough. So what other infield drills can you do with partner? You've seen, you've seen your standard double knee drill. You get on both knees and you flip it to each other. What we're going to do instead is we're going to have a partner here. Instead of flipping it, uh, John, Jason, I think, I think we should move the spread out a little bit because instead of flipping it, I want to kind of like sidearm throw it. Uh, just very likely to give a different trajectory because we've seen balls that come downward and that bounce is going to come up. So you got to kind of train that. So here we go. We're just going to try to feed our partner right in front and touch it and try to bounce it. going to be strong. If you use a training glove even better. Got to be soft. Got to be precise. Got to be strong. So this, this really mixes up the angle of where we're going with these bounces, because not all bounces are gonna stay like perfectly level. They might take steeper bounces, especially the higher you go, because I know like there's some really carpet-like fields where the bounces are really strong. So mix these in, because it's gonna allow you to work your hands in a different angle than you normally would. That's the one I got for your knees, but also, if you don't mind, I'm gonna, I want to add in a little backhand tip too. Yeah. So when I get these backhands down, man, I want to make sure that I'm getting the Nike behind the ball every time. So if I'm ever going for this backhand, I don't want to feel it like this because if I don't catch it, that ball is going right by me. But if I get my Nike behind it, there's a chance that it could hit me in the chest, go body up. I don't, I don't think that's no more resort. I think that's the last option. Then the first option is to use your hands. So once we're here and we're using our hands for this backhand, it hits me in the chest, it hits me in the chest, but that's the last option. And I think that's super important because once we get this right foot behind, we can try to redirect with this left foot. And now we're lined up to throw. Uh, mix in one shuffle and mix in quick releases. Mix in some of these, boom, let it rip. Mix in some where you got some time. You still gotta make a good, strong throw, stay in your legs. Don't do what I just did, I'm just demonstrating. But do it like an athlete. Obviously, being a great infielder, you gotta have the hands, you gotta work with the hands. But what about your feet? Like, what are you doing to work on your feet? Footwork is super important. There, is there anything that when you're training your guys or training yourself, that you're focusing on footwise? Oh, uh, yeah, yeah. Footwork patterns. Like, I, I talk about it all the time. I love patterns because a routine ground ball is something that you do routine, you do it all the time. So, you need patterns. And to train those patterns, I love to get on the line and work shuffles. So if I get on this line, I drop my glove. I'm just gonna do drop steps all the way down to the cage. And I'm 
gonna mix it up. I'm gonna do different types of infield pattern drills where I'm moving my feet in a footwork manner. So even long before I even touch a ground ball, I'm just gonna do some movements where I take a big step, boom, chop. Big step, chop. And I'm just doing different things to mimic what I'm gonna see when I'm on the field taking a ground ball. Now, obviously looking at you, I was a scout for a, a while. I can see you're moving really well. How important is moving like an athlete to be a good infielder? And how important is physical strength and getting in the gym for some of these guys to be a good infielder? Ooh, I can talk about this one all day. Uh, it's just, just about training like an athlete. So when you're out there and you're, you know, at least infielders, I'm talking about infielders, we can't do much slow twitch work because that's not, you know, what we're trained to do. We're trained to explode to a ball, make a play, and then rest. So I think it's important to train like that. Train like an athlete so that, you know, you're, you're not gasping for air after your practices. You're more like getting quality work in because baseball, let's be honest, is not the biggest cardio sport, at least for infielders. I know this might be different for pitchers and catchers, but fast twitch, train like an athlete, move like an athlete, be an athlete. Now, tough question, maybe, I don't know. Looking back, if you were to talk to young Coach Cal, right? You're looking back at young Coach Cal, and you had some advice for him as an infielder. Knowing what you know now, what would you say to, to young Coach Cal? 12 year old Coach Cal, 14 year old Coach Cal, what would you tell him about being a great infielder? Uh, yo, move your feet. <laughs> move your feet, I think that's the biggest one. Because, um, might jump the gun, but when it came to tryouts and maybe some opportunities where you know somebody's watching and it's time for you to deliver, sometimes we tend to play it safe. So instead of doing the footwork stuff that you just saw, I get a ground ball and I want to play it safe, so I'm stuck in the mud and I just want to catch a ball because the scout's watching. I mean, I fell for that a lot to where you know I'm trying to think about what they might think of me. When in reality, all I have to do is trust my training. I train for all of this to, to do what I want to do when it's time to do it, when they're watching. So I think that's number one is to trust your training. Boom. That's, that's it. Come on. Tell me about time is now. What does that mean? Okay. Uh, it was inspired by, by two events. The first one, I saw uh, the former Laker, former Net, D'Angelo Russell. Uh, he had a tattoo, time is now a tattoo, just like that, on his shoulder. The second I saw it, I'm like, wait a minute. We're on this time. I hope it's not trademarked, but I saw it and I was like, oh, this is this is beast. Uh, but the second date was when, when Kobe died. When Kobe died, I was like, wow, anything can happen overnight. Any second of the anything can happen. So why wait? You know, why go down with regret, I guess, right? Like, just do it. You, you gotta do it because you never know what, what, could, what tomorrow can bring. That's a, that's a great point too for these young athletes watching. I get a lot of dads of young baseball players. You know, we want the best for our sons out there on the field. And really it's about putting in the work and being consistent. And there's no better time to put in the work than mm -hmm. right now, right? Yep. I think that's a, that's a great, great, uh, great. I love the logo. I love, you know, everything about it and everything it encompasses. So really cool stuff again. I can add on. Yeah, yeah there's, a, there's a beautiful quote says uh, the, the best time to plant a seed was you know, was it yesterday or last year. The second best time to plant a seed is now. So you might not be good at it at first, but you can't let that stop you. Just add up the days. And it's all about adding up the days and the actions and you're gonna get to where you wanna be physically, mentally, most everything. So just add them up. There you go. If you wanna be a great infielder, try these infield drills that Coach Cal's got for you. If you want more great information, go check him out on YouTube. Coach Cal, time is now. Don't forget to subscribe over there. See you in the next video.